Hello and welcome back. I'm Sean and this is the Mountains Garage YouTube channel. We do all kinds of stuff, but today we're working on my 64 Dodge Dot GT that I'm swapping in a Turbo LS and a Power Glide. In the last episode, I did some work on the truck manifolds that I'm going to flip and use that to run my hot side for the GT45 Turbo El Cheapo. I like to mock up everything or have everything on hand that I'm going to use because it's easy to start a project, mount something and make piping. Or let's just say I started at the manifolds, ran them over to where I thought the turbo should live. And then realize if I moved it an inch to forward or back or up and down, I would have made my life a whole lot easier on the next step, like the piping to the intercooler and whatnot. So I have a very small intercooler. I think it's 12 by 18. My plants for the car, uh, my horsepower number is reasonable at maybe 600 tops. If I was to race it, it's eighth mile. And I could always spray methanol, have that for an injection since there's always other ways around it and have a cooler under the intake. I believe the cooler, the inner cooler I have, the charge cooler that I have is going to be minimal at best, but better than nothing. So the Opening in the grill of the Dodge Dot 1964 is small. The radiator is small also, but I believe that'll do the job. The radiator support is also structural. It's part of the shock tower front suspension setup. So it has a hole in it. I'm going to cut a round hole for the turbo inlet, but that's about all I want to butcher on it. So I was hoping to mount the intercooler where the radiator normally lifts making the hookup from the turbo to the intercooler easy. Actually, it's direct. And move the radiator three inches closer to the engine. So for mock-up purposes, I used a truck water pump. The truck water pump is the furthest out from the block, the furthest forward. So if I can make everything fit with the truck water pump, if I had to, I could always shorten up to Camaro being the middle length and Corvette being the shortest. So my goal, I have lots of truck brackets and it's really easy to modify the truck stuff. The IST uh, bracket kits, they, they get you covered no matter what combination you want to run. I'm only going to have an alternator. So Let's take a look at what I've done so far. But before we do, in the last video, I didn't want to use this T4 turbo flange because it had a casting flaw or crack, depending on how you want to look at it. And it has threaded holes and they didn't line up. So I went in and ordered and paid almost 90 bucks for this piece of junk. <laughs> I put regular nuts on it and tightened up the V-bands. The V-bands that come with it don't match the V-bands that are welded on here, but they'll probably work. The clamps are the small ones that I showed you, not the beefy ones, but that's okay. Design-wise, I'll close up, but it just absolutely comes in on this nice two and a half inch pipe and hits this, the backside of this. There's no transition. It is like hitting a wall other than this hole. So that sucks. At least this one was tapered. They did a really good job and that's definitely higher performance than this thing just slamming into a wall. But that's okay. I could probably get in with a die grinder and you know at least bevel it to help ease the transition, but this thing's warped by an eighth of an inch when they welded it. There's enough meat, I can put it on the belt sander and fix it, but this is the junk you deal with. So I'm still not sure which one I'm going to use. I might bore the holes out in this, weld up the crack, and use this. So I like that this is shorter. It takes up a lot less real estate. But all you can do is try to mock it up one piece at a time, having all the pieces and See how it lays up. It is going to get this 46 millimeter precision turbo wastegate that I've had for a long time. Uh, wastegate's not an area where I want to scrimp. The blow off valve on the intake side, that really doesn't bother me any. It's a short piece of pipe. If you had to change the blow off valve, that's easy, but typically the wastegate is kind of integral, especially if you dump the exhaust out of the wastegate into your downpipe that goes out under the car. So I've had that for a while. 
I'm still not sure where I'm going to place it. It looks like it's going to be in the crossover pipe, and I guess we'll see if that actually works or not. So I see a lot of people do it that way. And I guess in theory, when you open one side of the engine up, or I guess there's pressure in the exhaust anyway, if you let the pressure out, it's going to spin the turbo slower regardless. So the boost already accumulated is going to be greater than the exhaust side when you dump it. So I guess that in theory slows the turbo down. So we'll find out. Here's a comparison. This one's nice and tapered. If I was an exhaust gas flowing along at speed, I'd be pretty happy just to be tapered down through the funnel. This one just hits a wall with a small hole at the end. It's quite a shelf to stop air or at least disturb it. Would it actually affect anything? Well, yes, there's only the only way to find out would be to test them side by side, but that's just, I don't know. I finally realized I spent more time looking for this tool that I had already made than it would take me to build a new one. So I whipped up a new one. I even used my cardboard template for this as a little gasket because I'm funny like that. <laughs> and I had this eyelet sticking around. So this makes it nice to hang the turbo in there and free up your hands while you're trying to figure out where everything's gonna go. So the downpipe on this, this is a three and a half inch V-band that I bought. I'm gonna take a piece of three inch and you know, bell it up so it meets this. I'm going down with three inch. And while it's going to be tight, I should be able to go low enough under the manifold past the suspension. My O2 sensor will be accessible back there. And then I gotta go down past the torsion bar. So looks like a challenge, but not impossible. I dragged in a truck water pump from outside after I was done plowing snow on Christmas day. And now I have a three and a half to three inch silicone coupler, which if I can make the setup work, that coupler is unlikely to have a blow off because the turbo actually meets up with the intercooler. And I started making brackets. These brackets bolt where the stock radiator did. And then I'm gonna have brackets off here to bolt the radiator on just like it was stock. And it does clear here so far. So if I can get the radiator mounted in there, I'm gonna make an, a bottom bracket here and make radiator mounts. That's what I'm currently doing because if that doesn't work, I need to start all over and I don't wanna make hot side piping. And I can see that my original plan for the passenger side was to dump into the rear port on the flange, but I could see I need to go to the forward one and then probably run the crossover this way on the back one. But I'm not even going to worry about hot side piping until I get the turbo and the intercooler and the radiator mounted. I'm making the brackets out of a sheet of 18 gauge that I had. The stomp shear will do 16 gauge, so you have to really stand and jump on the foot lever, but it cuts it no problem. My brake, on the other hand, 18 gauge at 24 inches wide. I can get about halfway and then I need to have a pipe on it and give it an assist to get a kind of a round 90 degree bend. I have a Dayton three and one that has a press brake. This would have been a better choice, I believe, but I didn't uncover it because like everything else, I had to dig out the equipment to use it, but it wasn't too bad because I've been working out here in this room trying to make it a little better. It's a work in progress. I have the intercooler mounted with my crude brackets. They'll get pretty when we're done with them. Right now, they're just in their raw form. Now I'm making radiator mounts to reposition the radiator. Well, that's the basic concept anyway. I had to go a little closer to the engine than I wanted to to give myself room for the intercooler and clamps, especially this one where it flares out for the turbo. Now I gotta mark 
and secure the top. I got the bottom bolted temporarily. And then try the radiator in there. I don't know if it's gonna clear the old truck water pump. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world because I have a Corvette SFI balancer I wouldn't mind using anyway. I just buy a different water pump, shorter. I took the piece of scrap that I had left for making this bracket on both sides and made an L bracket that I will secure here for extra support. I don't want the radiator bouncing around, but uh, it's just all sheet metal. I'm not used to working with that concept that everything's just sheet metal, but welcome to the wonderful world of Mopa. Well, we're gaining, but I didn't drill and mount this permanently because I need to tighten my gap up in between them. I can't afford to give up that space. It's gonna be close. The lower hose connection, I was either gonna cut and shorten anyway and re-bead roll or potentially go with AN fittings. So I think it's gonna work. It's really rugged, even though nothing's really tight and they haven't put the brackets on the bottom, but conceptually, I think this is gonna work. I also need to consider an electric fan I don't want to put it in front of everything, but I will if I have to. If I determine I will need one, I probably will. My normal driving around here doesn't have me sitting in traffic, but hey, you gotta, you gotta plan ahead. And the transmission cooler will not be living right there. I've left it there just for now, but. So I need to tighten this whole setup up, but I think it's gonna work. That makes the turbo a direct mount, which I like. One step at a time. I've always enjoyed working with sheet metal, and I'm not sure why. Probably because I haven't done a whole lot of it. And for some reason, I focused on buying a lot of sheet metal tools, which does make the job a lot easier. You see a lot of people doing a lot, doing quarter panels and floors, and they have nothing but the death wheel on a cordless grinder and a hammer and a welder. And they're getting it done too, so I just love tools. And I won't apologize for that, never will. I have only sold a couple tools in my life only because they didn't operate up to expectations or there was something better, but typically I'll go with old tools over new tools anytime. And I always feel like it's money well spent, especially all the old, for instance, snap-on tools. I recently, I believe I talked about it, I bought a pull -a set that had hardly ever been used you know, on eBay, cheap money, just good stuff. You know, nowadays I don't buy off the tool trucks. I spent enough years making weekly payments, sometimes two or three different brand tool trucks, sometimes four tool trucks. <laughs> Whew, but tools make you money. That's enough about that. I hope you're having a great week. We're between Christmas and New Year's. It's been... Here, weather-wise, decent days and snowy days. Had some icing. I had to plow this morning. The sun was out this afternoon, so I dumped five more gallons of diesel fuel in the tractor. We're ready to go again. Catch you in a few days. Take her easy.